Yo, yo, welcome to lesson 26. So far, we learned how to use HTML and CSS to build our websites, but currently our website looks like a cake. Basically, we're just stacking elements on top of each other, and we never went over how to lay out these elements. So for today's lesson, we're gonna learn how to use Grid and also Flexbox to lay out our websites. When I first learned to build websites, I didn't know how to use CSS or grids or anything like that. I literally just created a table and then I would lay out the elements using rows and columns and my websites came out fine, but it took a lot of code and it didn't really look that great. So let me introduce Grid, which was basically created to make laying things out a lot easier. So Grid is mainly used for two-dimensional positioning. So if you look at this diagram here, as you can see, we have two columns here and inside this column, we have three rows with two columns. So basically with Grid, we can create cool layouts like this. Next, we have Flexbox, which is basically one-dimensional positioning. So you can either position your elements on the x-axis or on the y-axis. So in this example, we're trying to lay out four boxes horizontally. However, inside this container, we don't have enough space to lay out this fourth box. So what happens is we can make it wrap to the next line, but we are still laying things out on a one-dimensional positioning. So this is technically still the first row, but all we're doing is we're wrapping the fourth element so that it fits inside the container. So depending on your layout, it doesn't matter which one you use. Sometimes both concepts overlap, and when you use both of them together, you can get really cool designs. So for today's lesson, we're gonna learn how to lay out a website that looks like this. There will be a header, some content, and finally a footer. So on Replit, I created a simple website and it basically looks like a cake. I added a background color so that you can visually see how we can move these elements around. So let's look at the code. So I commented out Bootstrap so that we can learn how to do this with CSS. Here I have a header with an unordered list with three items inside it. Next, I have a div which will go on the right side of the page. Next, I will have two sections which is the content of the website. And finally, I have a footer, which has an unordered list with two items inside it. Next, all we have to do is think about how we want to divide our website into rows and columns. So this can be one row, this can be another row, and then this can be another row. And since this layout has two columns, all we have to do is split it here. Cool, so basically our layout has two columns and four rows. Next, we have to label each section inside the grid. So this will be a nav, and this will be a nav. This is content one, this is content two, and this is side, and this is also side, and this is footer, and this is also footer. So all we're doing here is labeling what each section represents. Cool, and we'll need this later on for our code. Let's go back to Replit. So the first thing we have to do is wrap all of our content inside a div. So let's do that. So let's add a div here, and then go to the bottom of the page, and then add a closing div at the bottom. And then you can right click the page, and click format document, and this will automatically indent the page for you. Cool, now let's go back to the div, and inside here, let's add a class equals container. So basically this div will contain all of the content of our website. Now let's go to our CSS, and inside here, let's style the container. So all we have to do is dot container, and then open the squiggle brackets and hit enter. Cool, so to turn this into a grid, all we have to do is type display colon grid. Next hit enter, and then type grid dash template dash areas. And then inside here, this is where we describe the template of our website. So basically all we need to do is copy this layout here and then put it inside the template. Uh, go back to Replit. So all we have to do is type nav nav twice because we have two columns. Actually, let's rename this to header. So let's do header header and then hit enter and then do this again. So we have content one and then a side. So now we have content two and side. And finally, we have footer, footer, and then end the statement with a semicolon. Next, type grid dash gap, and this will determine how much spacing there is between each section. So let's put eight pixels for now, and then close it, and type grid dash template dash columns. And here we can say auto auto, because we have two columns, and we want them to automatically size themselves, and then hit enter. And now let's type grid dash template dash rows. And for this, type one FR, two FR, two FR, and one FR where basically FR stands for a fractional unit. And if you add one plus two plus two plus one, you're gonna get six. So all this is saying is that the header will take up one sixth of the page and the content of the page will take up four sixths of the page and also the footer will only take up one sixth of the page. Cool, and now let's click run. So something happened. Now we have two columns for our page, but it doesn't match what we have here. So the only thing we need to do left is we need to map these template areas to the respective sections. For the header, we need to do grid-area and then add a colon. And here we need to type header and then we close the semicolon and then copy this. And then we have to do it for each section. So for the side, let's paste it and let's call this side because we call that side here. 
And for the intro, we called it content one. So now let's go to the next section. And for this one, we called it content two. And finally, let's do the footer. So now let's put footer here. And now let's click run. And cool, just like that, we laid out our page with grid. And it pretty much just looks like this drawing. Nice. Now the last thing that we want to do is to align these list items into a row. So we can actually do this by using Flexbox. To do this is very simple. All we need to do is create a container for our list items. So we go back to index.html. I have already created a container for the list items. In this case, I called it list container. And for each item, I called it list item. And if we scroll down, you can see that the footer also has the list container and list item. So basically we're sharing the same classes. So that means we can just style it once and it will be applied to both of these elements. Now let's go back to style.css. So in here, let's style the list container first. So do dot list container, open the squiggle brackets and here type display and then type flex, which stands for a flex box. And now hit enter. Now type flex dash direction and now type row because we want it to be horizontal. And now let's click run. And as you can see, it's now in a row. All we have to do is add some padding. So now let's add gap and then put 10 pixels, which will add 10 pixels to each item. Now let's click run. And now that looks a lot better. And now let's add one more line. Just do justify dash content, put a colon and then type center and then put a semicolon. And now let's click run. And cool, now the list items are in the center of the page. I just noticed that these dots look pretty ugly. So let's get rid of that. All we have to do is style the list item. So let's do dot list item, open the squiggle brackets and then hit enter. Now type list dash style dash type and then colon and type none. And now let's click run. And cool, just like that, we styled both the header and also the footer with the same class. This layout is pretty cool. And we basically achieved this through the use of grid and flexbox. In the next class, I'm gonna show you how to do this a lot easier. But for now, check out these websites. They have a cheat sheet for grid. So here you can see all the different things that you can do with the grid. And also check out this Flexbox cheat sheet. It has images and also some code that you can copy and try out on your own. If you want more practice, check out Flexbox Froggy. This is a super cool game where you can just type some code and basically practice your Flexbox. In addition, you can also practice your CSS through this site CodePit. Feel free to check it out. So yeah, make sure to practice these concepts and update your websites so that it has a cool layout. Thanks for watching. Make sure to like, subscribe, and comment, and I'll see you in the next lesson.